Good morning, sir. What's up, brother? How you doing? I could not complain. How about yourself? Very good. A lot of people have asked me, you know, when, you know, how did, how did Jack find out about this film and what drew him to the story? Just want to put that out there. Obviously, you know, I know, but for the folks watching, like, what do you remember about first watching it? And what was the sensation that came up for you? I think it was a purposeful accident that I came across the film. Uh, I saw it. It was emailed to me. And I was like, is this real? Hmm. What is this? Who is this? How come I never heard of this? It hmm. must be real. There's footage. It must be real. She's narrating this herself. Hold on. Let me go to the people I know. Google. Oh, it is real. Hold on. Let me go to Bing. Hey, Lisa Leslie, you ever heard of it? So the fact that I've never heard of her, I was saying to myself, the world probably doesn't know about this woman either. Mm. And I have my people contact the director who's involved in this and ask them if I can be involved. Be involved in a sense to where, let me help you get this information out. You know, we live in a time now where uh, information is easy, especially if you're a celebrity, it's easy to get out. I have a lot of followers. I have a lot of influence. I have a lot of people that have a lot of flowers. And I know for a fact, when you put positive information in people's hands, it always goes viral. Mm. Funny and positive always goes viral. Some negative goes viral, but you know, the way I run my social media, 60% uh, to make you laugh, 30% to inspire you, and 10% to let you know what I'm selling. This was a, a, a inspirational story. She was so good that she scored the first uh, basket in the Women's Olympic history in 1976. So I didn't know that. She was drafted by the NBA New Orleans Jazz in 77. I didn't know that. She turned it down. I didn't know that. I didn't know she won three championships in a row. I've never heard of this woman. So I was like, I think it's fair that the world doesn't know who this woman is either. And back in those days, you know, African-American people in general had to go through a lot. So you could just, you know, imagine how it was for an African-American woman. So mm -hmm. when I sit down and I watch the documentary, I was like, this is really good. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like really good. I, it was so good that I was mad that it didn't have a part two. I'm like, part two. <laughs> part two. <laughs> I'm like, part two. Queen of basketball, is there a part two? Like, damn. So when I contacted you, you know, your team was gracious enough to let me jump aboard. You know, I get all these questions. What? Well, why didn't do this? Why didn't do that? And I have to explain to people that <clears throat> when you're on a team, that's all about the roles. I'm not proud foot production. That's not what I do. I am the guy that's going to help get it out there. I'm the guy that when you give it to me, I'm a here. Boom, 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 boom. And, uh, you know, we, we make a good team. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm never micromanage you. Would love to do what you do and direct and do a documentary, but I'm not that good yet. So thank you for having me on the team and thank you for allowing me to help get the word out. Oh, it's it's an honor for for me. It's a it's a love fest. I think I think it's a really great match. And of course, I think the most important thing, right, is that we're we're doing what we're doing for her, for for Miss Harris and wherever she is. It's interesting, you know, obviously we both found out the hard news in January when she passed away. But I I am not a religious person, but I feel like as as things happen and, you know, uh, you know, different articles get written and, you know, with with Stefan joining the team, I feel her presence, you know, like I think I, I feel like she's she's she knows what's going on. Uh, and certainly the film feels like it has kind of a, um, uh, a life of its own that I think maybe is coming from her, that she, her spirit is reaching people through this film. You know, what you, you did a great job because it was such an intimate experience. And I can't believe you had that precious and, and that beautiful archive never seen, mm -hmm. never seen before footage. It's actually magical to watch. Yeah. And I, uh, of course, I talked to her a few times and we FaceTimed and all that. But when I got the news the same day you did, it kind of hurt me. So I was like, because once again, I was like, I always put stuff off to 
I'm gonna do it next week. I'm gonna do it next week. I should have jumped on the plane the, the first day you, you introduced me to this lady and went to go see her. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Shaq. We're working on your documentary. Is there anything you want to tell us? Boom, 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 boom. But you know, it was always, I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. And then I got the news. So mm -hmm. I would have loved to meet her, but I'm, I'm going to get the chance to hang out with her son and her daughter and her grandkids. And that, that'll be good. But she was a, she was a wonderful woman. Yeah, that's for sure. What, what, what do you think, you know, from the, from the perspective of a basketball historian and one of the most dominant basketball players of all time, what do you think her legacy in particular is? Well, the queen of basketball fills in a huge gap in the history of basketball by finally letting Lucy Harris tell her own story. Is definitely a story that we all need to hear, and you know, consider, you know, she was the, she was denied the opportunity of having a fulfilling, enriching career, you know, because she was a woman, because she was a black woman, and you know, 2022 is the 50th anniversary of the signing mm. of Title IX. That's going a long that's that's going a long way in ending discrimination on the basis of, you know, sex in college. But as we saw earlier this summer with the NCAA weight room controversy, mm. the fight is far from over. It's time for us to, to make Title IX a practical and ground reality. Mm. <laughs> it's time. I don't believe we're still having these conversations. Give, give the women equal pay. Give them equal life. You know, we got expensive locker rooms with security outside and the girls got to go lift weights behind the bench. That makes no sense. Really doesn't. Yeah. So you feel like the time has come long overdue. Way long overdue, too long overdue, extremely long overdue. Yeah. Time, time has come. Mm. What, um, what do you think, you know, one thing that really stood out to me in the movie is when her games were more popular than the men's uh, games. Right. I, I love that because it's almost like it's this amazing other reality, right. In the seventies where, that was the most popular thing that Lucy was packing the stadium. It, it, what, what was it like for you to see some of that footage? It, it was nice. We actually, like when I first got to LSU, we, we had a, a female named Pokey Chapman and they used to play right before us. And, you know, our fans used to get there at two, three o'clock for a seven o'clock game to see her mm -hmm. and then to see Chris Jackson. So seen it before, but not to that magnitude, but, it should just to tell you how how dominant and how great she was. Yeah. Why what why do you huh? What time the men play? Seven. And uh, what time the girls play? Five. Oh yeah, I'll go to the five o'clock game. <laughs> um what do you what do you hope people take away from the story? Is it about equal pay? Is it about visibility? What is it about for you? So sports. It's supposed to be a fair space, it's supposed to be a place of equality, it's supposed to be about merit, talent, it should be a, a place that's free of racism, misogyny, free of inequality. And now, 50 years later, we have to really reassess how we're, we're, we're doing on that. So, you know, that's what it's supposed to be about. Don't say it's supposed to be about that and then don't take action on it. We have to take action on it. You know, who are we? Who are we sidelining in sports today? That's the, that, that's the question that Lucy asks. And how can we make sure what happened in, in, in her time isn't happening all over again? That's what I hope people get out of this. I saw you, uh, you signed the letter to encourage Delta State to change the name of their Coliseum to the Lucy Harris Coliseum. That was awesome. Tell me hey. about that. I mean, listen, this woman, you know, like every time I go back to the Staples Center, I always say to myself, look what I built. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Staples start with an S. I built it. So, you know, she definitely brought a lot of recognition to the to, to that Coliseum. And yeah, you know, in honor of her, in honor of her legacy, I think it'll be be a, a nice gesture. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, well, we we got our uh, we got our major major motion picture to to work uh, on next. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>